In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. So ladies, let's um, take a few moments to pray. Just quiet our hearts. Invite the Holy Spirit in. reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11. And when they drew near to Jerusalem to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat, untied and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Master has need of it and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at the door out in the open street, and they untied it. And those who stood there said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And it goes on to describe, um, they bring the colt to Jesus. Um. This last part of the three talk series of Facing Jerusalem, I was thinking of a couple of things with regard to this little meditation. First is there's an obedience to these two disciples. They are willing to do what the Lord asks, even though it seems quite menial, even though it may seem less than what they had expected or hoped for whatever. But, you know, they do, there's this responsiveness. During this time, I think it's a very important um, quality is a certain responsiveness in your home. Um, I think there can be a subtle achadia, laziness that says, well, I can get to that later. I can do that. And you know, we want to be more prompt. We want to be more faithful. Um, things are moving. They're, they're changing. It'd be interesting to see how you're responding. How, are you, how do the children see you're responding? Um, but the first is, notice the disciples. And I would just like you to examine in your heart, sort of an examination of conscience. Are you, are you being a responsive? Are you being docile or obedient? The second thing is that when they go into the city, they find it just as God had had told them. As the Lord had said, you'll find a colt tethered there. And I don't think that anything that we're going through is um, something that God hasn't prepared us for. You know, what we're experiencing now is not where did this come from? Fine, it's a virus. It's very complicated. It has its natural realities. And you know, I have said it has a spiritual reality to it because it, it's somewhat divisive. It's, it's separating. But it's okay in the fact that what's happening is through the division, growth is coming. It's almost like the body of Christ And we're cutting off little pieces, but those little pieces are growing in petri dishes. And those homes are coming alive and it's producing grace and and virtue and values. So when we come back together, all of those will be strengthened, probably to help some of those that have not done anything, that have withered. But the point is, is that, you know, God is not surprised, but this is part of God's plan. What do you think God is trying to say to you during this time? What is he trying to help you experience? Okay. First, are you docile? And second, are you willing to wait like this, like this cult, right? Are you willing to wait for it so that you can be an instrument of God? And that's where the tension is for a lot. A lot of folks 
don't want to wait. They want it to move quickly and rapidly. And it doesn't always work like that, okay? They have to, like the animal, they have to be patient because when God's ready to use it, he's going to use it, right? The last thing is just that the onlookers and their commentary, why, why are you doing this? I think that there is a subtle evil voice that is saying to so many people, why are you doing this? What difference does that make? Um, Not long ago, earlier this week, I went out and I picked up some bread from a distributor, borrowed a truck, and um, I picked up a bunch of bread. And, you know, I was thinking to myself on the way up there, well, I was hearing, um, what difference does 200 boxes of bread make? Six loaves in each, 1,200 loaves. You know, I was like, what? all I kept hearing was, whatever, it's, they're still going to be hungry. And I remember like thinking, I can't give in to that. That's just not of God. Anyway, I want you to realize that, you know, the question, you know, why are you doing this? I think is really a question that's coming from a mocking voice. And it's coming from a place that is not rooted in love. And the evil one always says that to us to get us discouraged. Anyway, as we, as you go forth into Palm Sunday tomorrow, may the Lord give you peace, and I'll do some talks for next week, okay? Um, but give me some time to pray about it. May Almighty God give you peace. May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord help you to discern, to be obedient, to be patient like, like the cult, and then to not surrender to the mocking voices. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen.